What's good, my people? Welcome into Buckets Action Network's daily NBA betting podcast. We're in the workshop Tuesday, NBA playoff slate, and I got a couple of the fellas with me. You know the man, Fiddlesticks. Michael Fiddle is breaking it down with us, and the man, the myth, the legend, J Money is money. Got the chains out today. That's why you need to go subscribe to the Action Network YouTube page so you can see it. They're not just listening to the audio. You're not going to see the ice that J Money is bringing out. For the second round of the NBA playoffs, we are presented by BetMGM, the king of sportsbooks. Go download the Action Network app once you subscribe to the Action Network YouTube page. All right, we got two game ones on this Tuesday slate. You know how we get down. We're going to give you the play. We're going to give you the cap. We're going to get you guys out of here. Michael Fiddle, give me your best bet for game ones on the Tuesday NBA playoff slate. I'm going to take Cavaliers at Celtics under 209 and a half. J Money is money. Give me your best bet for the Tuesday NBA playoff slate. Give me the Celtics or the balls. Money as he live. Okay. Me and my guy J Money are a little bit aligned here. I am going to take the Cavs first half team total under 50 and a half minus 110. Celtics to lead end of every quarter minus mm-hmm. 125 in the market. All right, fellas, let's get straight to it because we got a lot to talk about and we don't have so much time because we know how Matt Mitchell likes to keep us concise. So, Fiddle, I'm going to come to you because me and Jay are somewhat correlated on the Celtics. Talk to me about the total here and why you're looking at the under. So I did a great breakdown of this yesterday on Buckets Live where I really explained how the market opened and how there was some incredible value grabbing a really early under and how I set up a middle and I went through the whole process of understanding the math behind it so i strongly suggest checking that out but this game is still an under spot even though i've created a nice little middle i'm tilted in my exposure towards the under so i prefer the under being the outcome that happens and with this number at 209 and a half it's kind of floating in no man's land probably as a result of the jared allen news but if jared allen does end up playing then I strongly think that this dips back down to around 206 and a half. I think the fluctuation and variability in the early market was because the uncertainty around the JA news. So we know he did pregame warmups in game six and game seven, and we know he's dealing with bruised ribs. So now you're getting close to a week out where I would expect him trying his third day going through pregame warmups in game one. I would expect him to be activated He is an incredible player towards the under because of his rim protection and his rebounding. So if you could still grab an under 209 and a half and then J.A. ends up coming back and being activated, at that point, you're getting three points of line movement and even considering betting 50% back the other way and taking a late over at like 206. But ultimately, under 209 and a half, I think, is a strong position. Now, listen, if you don't follow Michael Fiddle on Twitter, he laid out for you. He said flat out, some uh, a book out there in the market flat out made a typo, made a mistake, hung 216 and a half on the total. He immediately hit that and then went across the board, chopped around, and then was taken over 209s to create a nice seven-point middle where you are absolutely chilling with your feet kicked up, watching the game, hoping to, to, to crack them for, for two spots, two units, if you did a one-unit play and then potentially just losing a little bit of juice if you somehow brick out on both. But those are the type of things you're trying to look for in the market. Make sure you tap in with Fiddle at Fiddle's Picks. J Money is money. Any thoughts overall on the total this series? And, um, hey, man, I tried to tell everybody about the Magic Boy. Everybody was disrespecting those boys. They came (laughs) in and battled and almost pulled it off. Didn't get it done against Cleveland. What do you think about Fiddle's play on the total here and potentially J.A. being in limbo, Jared Allen? Yeah, I just wanted to say something about the Magic real quick. They did push the Cavs uh, to the brink of elimination. They almost got it done, but, I mean, we knew the Cavs were going to get that done, man. Come on, man. Come on. We we knew the Cavs were going to get that get get that out the way, uh, whether it's in seven or not, man. But Cavs end up getting the job done. But, yeah, the fact that they played around with their food kind of really sets them up for a really bad spot in this particular game. But before I talk about the spread, just the total, just me personally, like Jared Allen means a ton for this one, uh, in my opinion. 
Obviously, he's a rim protector. He's a great rebounder as well. He is the defensive anchor of the Cavs um, defense over there. We saw with that in that Orlando series without Jared Allen out there, Mobley's a great rim protector. But with just Mobley out there, it's a lot different. If you can kind of pull him away from the rim, it's a you can get a lot more easy baskets inside. We know how the Celtics are. Um, these guys can go bunkers from three. They can get they can really score from all three levels. They can get you from the three point play and they can mid range. They can get you inside the paint even without uh, Porzingis in there, which actually with their they actually a little bit stronger in the paint without Porzingis. because he just likes to stay on the fucking uh on the perimeter out there man pa- i call him paper plate Porzingis, but yeah the total uh, obviously <laughs> obviously i'm not a total better <laughs> i'm not a total guy uh but the the total with me betting the total would mainly be on jared allen i do think if he's out there could be a lot more easy buckets in the paint but i don't expect the Cavs to score a ton of points as well man so um i do think that possibly you could just like hone in on the Cavs team total under they're probably gonna be running on fumes in this particular game only one day of rest of uh, coming off a seven game series absolute horrible spot um for the celtics so uh no looks for me on the total but it would it would um depend a lot on jared allen's status in my opinion yeah, the team total for the Cavs that Jay mentions is right, right at 98 and a half. I'm seeing in the market. So the that may be priced in a bit. That's a low number, but I, I agree with both of these guys. I don't expect them to be – I don't expect there to be a lot of points. Shout out paper plate for Zinkins. <laughs> P, 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 P. <laughs> all right, Jay money is money. Let's get to your play, and then we'll wrap it all up. Because I guess we all we all are correlated. Fiddles on the under. I'm on the team total under for the first half in the Cavs. We all think that Boston's going to come out and take care of business. Tell me why you're laying the 11, Jay Money. Yeah, it's a smack city spot for me, man, with the Celtics. Like I say, any team coming off a game seven series, that first game, unless they have, which they never really have two or three days off rest, unless they have two or three days off rest, it's just an absolute emotional letdown um, spot as well, man. So on one end, you like, I always keep it real with people. On one end, you could argue that the Celtics have obviously um, been off for like damn near a week. You see what I'm saying? But you look at the Celtics, this team is not really messing around. I know they messed around one game versus the Heat, but the the other four games really showed us. I feel like that the Celtics this year were going to mess around they could have messed around and lost a couple of games uh versus the heat they didn't do that this team is not not effing around this year in my opinion i think the celtics are not playing with their food they know it's at stake um, they've been put out the conference finals they've been put out the uh they've lost in the finals this team is motivated more than ever they've had their best team ever since uh 2008 as well and i think they know it's at stake and they want to come out and punch these teams in the mouth as well in the first game so the fact that they are rested they still it could be a little rust but i, I expect for the full game that's why i'm staying off the first quarter and first half i expect for the full game these guys just win this game by 20 plus points um the Cavs, we know that this team is it's kind of hobbling right now. I mean, Donovan Mitchell is a little banged up. Darius Gard is a little banged up. Struce has, like, he's fucking dis. Where's Max Struce at? He's absolutely disappeared as well. And like I said, if they don't have Jared Allen, I just see a ton of buckets coming inside. We know that guys like Derek White can get hide from the perimeter. Um, these guys have Drew Holiday and Derek White. They can put on Mitchell and Garland, a couple of smaller guards as well. I just like the Celtics here uh, up and down the roster here better. Uh, the bench as well. Uh, I just I think the Celtics are too much for these guys, man. I'm not sure. I wouldn't be a bit. I don't think it happens, but I wouldn't be surprised if the Celtics swept these boys. Like the Cavs have showed us that they're mentally weak out there. The lights are too bright, and I mean they're going up against the best team in the NBA in this one, man. So um, I'd be surprised. The Cavs should probably get one game in this series, but I I mean I wouldn't bet on it. It would be Celtic sweep or nothing for me in this one, man. The Celtics, as long as they don't play around with their food like they usually have done. But to start this series, I think they really come out here and send a message. Horrible spot. Um, I don't really have the numbers. I'm sure my guy Matt Moore um, has the numbers on this. But teams coming off game seven, it's an absolute bet. It's an absolute horrible spot for them. I got them for you. I got them for you, Jay. Especially I got them when you're going up against up. the best team. Hey, yeah, let no, us know, no my doubt. guy. I got, them, I got them for you coming up. And look, let's be honest. Donovan Mitchell, look, Cleveland, I got y'all a little first round win. I'm gonna go ahead and get up out of town, and that's that. You can hang that banner. <laughs> Donovan Mitchell won you a first round series. I did my best, and I'm gonna go ahead and find my new team, Michael Fiddle. How do you feel about laying the the big number with an overall shorter total that you are taking the, the under? And now, for me, throughout the years as a younger better, like a lot years ago, I would always, for whatever reason. Uh, strap myself into a very particular spot where I would be laying 11 and taking the under or something like that. And I highly suggest 
betters, new betters, avoid things like that, especially in football as well. You're laying minus seven, and then you cap yourself by taking the under as well, and you're essentially trying to pick a perfect game here. So I think the the option here, in my opinion, and I would love to hear what you guys have to say about it too, is if you like Jay and you like that minus 11 and a half, I would avoid the total, especially if you're going to take an under. But I would just avoid the total altogether. Pick the side, pick the total, pick one. Don't get greedy and try to combine both here. Fiddle, thoughts on the, the minus 11? Yeah, I think that's very well said. You were saying correlated. Our thoughts are correlated. Our bets are kind of inversely correlated. Like, uh, we don't want to have an under while we also are backing a minus 11, asking a team to win by 12, but doing it in less than, you know, 208 points. That's a yeah. tall task to ask for. You might as well at that point, if you're hitting them as two straights at that point, you're locking yourself into that game script. You might as well at that point start parlaying things together and trying to get yeah. a huge uh, win, but I don't even like that strategy. The The best way to do this is pick one or the other. Jay's yeah. probably right if it's a me versus Jay battle. Um, but ultimately, I chose that the under was the stronger spot also because I picked up a misread in the market. There's been clear trends and sharp action on both of these, but I think you're very right to say it's one or the other. I don't think sharps are themselves on both. But sharp groups are either on Celtics against the spread or the under in the spot. Yeah, I agree. Jay, any other thoughts on that before I get into my cap real quick? Yeah, I, I, I guess the way that I'm looking at the game, I don't. The Cavs might not see 90 points in this game, so I would, uh, if I like the under, like something that one of my guys kind of taught me was to kind of focus on team totals. If you like one team, rather if you didn't want to lay the points, then you could go with the team total over with the Celtics. But with them being off for so long, I expect them to have a ton of more energy to put towards the defensive end. And we've seen the Cavs like literally crawl into a shell. Uh, like a snail or a turtle or something. You see what I'm saying? When things get hard. So um, I feel like these guys really come in here and lock down defensively, and I would target the uh, Cavs team total under. Yeah, team total is always a spot that's interesting because sometimes these the sides get a little – it's a little murky. But, like, I expect mm. the team to show up, but I don't know if they're going to cover said number. That's when I start to look at the team total as well. Well said from both Mike Fiddle and uh, Jay Money is money, of course. All right. I am going to go with the Cavs first half team total under 50 and a half minus 110 in game one. And I'm also going to take the Celtics to lead end of every quarter minus 125. Jay Money brought it up. Teams coming off of game seven series do not fare well. And we'll get into those numbers here in a second. But like, I, I don't understand how I can go any other way. I have to back the Celtics big in this particular spot. I already mentioned how much I respected Orlando. And they showed up in that series and showed out. And I would have loved to had a mic on Jay Money in the first half and to see if he would have said, man, we knew the Cavs were going to get that done. Because I had a Cavs season or series 48. ticket. Hey, bro. And minutes, I, I, hey, I was, I was sweating, bro. I'm not going to lie to you, bro. I was sitting there and I was, <laughs> you, know the, you know the meme where the dude is chilling? Like, you know when you're playing video games, Jay, and the guy's chilling and the meme is when he sits up? Sits up in yeah. his chair and gets focused. No, nah, I was I, scared, I, bro. I was. I, I ain't gonna stunt. I was scared. Darius Garland. <laughs> these these mfers are playing soft as hell, bro. And I'm just like, here, here we go. When they yeah, when they were down 18 points, I was like, bro, come on, man. Nah, trust me. I was kind of panicking. I'm not gonna lie. I can't. Yeah, yeah. It, it was looking ugly. Garland was throwing the ball out of bounds every other possession. He was. Yeah, he didn't. I don't think. I don't think Darius Garland hit the rim until the third quarter in that game off a couple of attempts. But let me let me get back to it. Jared Allen's stats, we already talked about that, was, is going to be massive. So stay close on that, on that injury report. As we record this on Monday afternoon, it's going to be up in the air. So keep your eye on that. Cavs, minus 29 when Allen is off the floor in the four games he played in that Orlando series. 0-1 on the road without him. And they eked out that game five without him. They easily could have lost that game, and they probably end up losing the series to Orlando if they don't squeeze out that game five. But 0-1 and, and a minus 29 without Jared Allen on the floor in the four games he played. Let's talk about the first half here. Boston has been absolutely dominant in the first half all year long. 56-25-1 ATS in the regular season. Playoff number one defensive rating. I know they were playing Miami, but I could care less. It's at 93.7. They have been stifling on the defensive side of the rock in the first 24 minutes. In the regular season, they were fifth in uh, first half team defense overall throughout the regular season. They covered the number 4-0 ATS in all four wins versus the Heat 
in that first round series. So they have been showing up in that first 24 minutes, getting up, getting out, and putting it on you early. Throughout the years, the thing for me in Boston, I was never worried about them starting the game. I was worried about those boys finishing the game. Like, the, they, they always come out the first two quarters, take care of business. Nothing has changed this year. It's when it gets tight in the fourth is when I worried. I like them in the first half always, and I like them to show up here in the first half and strap up the Cavs as well. All right, let's go back to that Game 7 series talk that Jay Money laid out. I got to shout out Raheem Palmer. He laid out an awesome article in 2021 on the Action Network, dived into like 33 years of data on teams coming off of Game 7s and point differential and everything. That was 2021. This is what I've found in the last three years. So if you go back 36 years of data, teams coming off Game 7s in the playoffs are 31-53 and 53 straight up in Game 1. They show up after that seven-game series and get smoked. Let's go back to 2021. Both Bucks and the Hawks played seven games in round two before playing in the Eastern Conference Finals. Bucks played the Nets. KD steps on the line. We all remember that. Hawks versus the Sixers. Ice trade takes care of business. They go. Both of those teams played in game seven, so we'll defunct 2021. Let's go to 2022, though. Boston coming off seven games versus Milwaukee. They lose game one in the Eastern Conference Finals to, Milwaukee, uh, to Miami by 11 points. Mavs coming off the seven-game series with the Suns. The, the famous picture of Luka taunting Devin Booker. Mavs get blown out by the Warriors in Game 1 at the Western Conference Finals. 112-87, 25-point win for Golden State. 2023, last year, Golden State coming off seven games versus the Kings in Round 1. Lakers won Game 1 of Round 2, 117-112. Boston coming off seven games versus the Sixers in the Eastern Conference Finals. Lost Game 1 of the Finals to Miami, 123-116. These Conference Finals, yes. Heat coming off seven games in their, in their uh, Eastern Conference Finals win versus Boston. They get smoked in game one by Denver, 104-93, 11-point W. So when we're talking about those numbers and coming off of a seven-game series in game one, it is tough sledding. I expect it to be extremely difficult for the Cavs. Cavs are getting smoked here, in my opinion. The only reason I'm not with Jay Money and I'm laying the minus 11, 11 and a half, depending on where you're looking in the market, is because the total is so tight. I understand that this game could easily be like a 110-101 type spot where potentially the Cavs backdoor Boston and it gets a little spooky towards the end of the game. But I expect Boston to come out in the first half, first quarter, roll, Cavs. First half, under 50 and a half on the team total. Boston to lead every quarter, win the game, start to finish, minus 125. Jay Money is Money Thoughts. Yeah, I like it. Um, I can never really seem to cash one of those bets. I know what it is. Like, it's basically like it's called a wire to wire bet. They have to like they can't be losing at any point at any um not any point in the game, but at any uh at the end of any quarter. I mean, I like it. Only thing I'm kind of worried about is that first quarter. But like, I don't think the Cavs they have like a the Cavs have a good squad. I just don't think they have a good coach, and they are really banged up. Like, all there's like three main players on the starting lineup that are really banged up here, man. And so. Like I said, this this version of the Celtics, I really don't think they're they're out here bullshitting. Like, uh, even though it's a bad spot, they're still going to come out with a lot of energy and attack these guys defensively. So even if the shots aren't falling, I still expect them to come and lock down on defense to where. And that's why I like defense so much because even when your offense isn't on, you're still in the game. You see what I'm saying? So that's what these new age players need to understand about defense. Like, it's always <laughs> going to keep you in the game, man. They're, it, but I love the playoff basketball though. Uh, I like where you're going there, and I like the team total under for the Cavs here. Yeah, I mean, if the Celtics can get out and get out and set up the first quarter and get that lead, I think they go tape to tape. That's why I'm looking at that spot. I think they have a really good first half and start to the game, and they keep it rolling. Fiddle, any thoughts on the Cavs team total under 50 and a half and the wire to wire for the Celtics? I'm fine with them. I, 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 the one thing I would be slightly concerned about is the in the wire to wire is the rest versus rust debate, but the Celtics have been a great uh, – first half team all year they ended up winning every first half against the Miami Heat even the game two where they lost I think they were up three um at halftime I just think in in terms of the Cavaliers and one thing that we have not mentioned yet is they had to travel after game four right they were in Orlando coming back to Cleveland for game five then after game five they go back to Orlando for game six after game six they go back to Cleveland for game seven now they're going one day's rest to Boston. So the travel implications for this spot is why 
I think all of us are kind of sinking our teeth in and really being willing to fade the Cavaliers. It's a rest advantage and travel advantage for the Celtics, which we don't see that in the NBA playoffs when we get to games two, three, four. Previous game ended at the same time in the same place. So those factors become neutralized. They're really great opportunities to pick off when you get the game seven versus game one uh, situation. So I, I strongly agree with that. All right. Um, to recap, the fellas, J Money is money. Celtics minus 11, minus 110 in the market. Fiddle, Cavs, Celtics under 209 and a half. I am on Cavs first half team total under 50 and a half, minus 110. Celtics to lead at the end of every quarter, tape to tape, wire to wire, minus 125. For J Money is money. For Michael Fiddle, Fiddle picks. I am your host, Sean Little. Don't forget, subscribe to the Action Network on YouTube. Download the Action Network app. And don't forget it, we are presented by BetMGM, the king of sportsbooks. Go download that as well. Support the squad. We do the work for you here at Buckets. Until tomorrow, stay locked in. We'll be back. Get Buckets, baby.